Hello and welcome to The Awakening. I am your host, Apostle Marian Warner, and this is co-host Asia Smith. We are coming to you with some exciting information today. I know I say it every time, but it is exciting. Um, now, maybe some of you may not think so because maybe you're just um, in a mode of comfortability. You're kind of stagnant or something. But if you're like us who are striving to be greater and better, then you're going to like this topic today. So we're going to pray first and then we're going to go into our topic and we hope that you are ready to hear what God has to say. Father, thank you for this time that you have given unto us. We pray that our ears and eyes are open to see and hear today. Lord, we know that you love us. You love us far beyond what we understand, what we know. And because of your love for us, you are giving us this opportunity to speak to your people. And even to those that who don't know you, someone may be listening or watching today and you just kind of happened upon the station and you're wondering, oh, what are they doing? What are they talking about? Well, Father, we thank you that this topic, this message will touch their heart, cause them to listen to the whole message. Father, we're praying that you would draw by your spirit. And then, Father, as you draw, we ask that you would just begin to engage them. Give us an encounter and an experience today. And we give you praise, glory, and honor. Amen and amen. Amen. So, in the pursuit of his presence. That's what we're going to talk about today. In the pursuit of his presence. So, in our pursuit of God, are we after things? Mm. or him? That's a question. Is his presence the greatest reward? So when I first gave, you know, thought about the topic, those were questions that came up in my spirit because, you know, a lot of times people may say, well, I'm going after God. You know, I love the Lord. I'm seeking after God. But are you really? Is it what he can do for you? His blessings, is, is that what you're focused on? Because really that's what we're talking about when we say pursuit. Um, you're seeking after something. And so God is a God that looks at our motives. He's looking at our heart. And so when I ask that question, you know, are you really going after him or what he can do for you? The things that he can give you, the blessings, you know, because, of course, when you're first saved, that's what gets us. It's the blessings. It's it's, you know, what what we receive from God that gets us. And then as we grow older and, and we begin to learn more about God, then we come to know him. And so our pursuit should change. Right. It shouldn't be just for what God can do. Or what God has for us, but it should be to get to know him. And I know I am at that place in my life. I'm at an age, a maturity that I want him. You know, I already know that I have everything else because everything is in him. So he is what I desire. He is what I want. Um, I want to please him. I want to do what makes him happy. I want him to be pleased when he watches me do this program. So even when the program's over, I'm saying, okay, God, how did I do? Did I say what you needed me to say? Did, did someone get saved? Was someone transformed? Was someone renewed? You know, was someone encouraged? So that's my pursuit after him and what he wants and what, you know, um, what he would consider success because what we think is success is not success. And so that's what I'm asking today. And that's what I want to talk about in the pursuit of his presence. And so not just knowing that God is here, but that I want to be with him. I want to be in his manifested presence. So there's a difference between, oh, I know God is here, mm -hmm. than when he manifests. So when he manifests, what does that mean? I can feel him. His presence is right here with me. It's not that I know he's here and yeah, he's here. But it's his manifested presence where he's tangible. 
You spoke about that on one of our um, episodes today. She said, we want the tangible. So that's why we go after the mic. We have that microwave mentality, that popcorn me- mentality. Pop, pop. It's done. It's over. It's instant. And and God does not always work with us that way. He will make us wait. And so we have to get out of, of just even the tangible physical because he can be tangible, but we don't see God because he's a spirit. Right. So when I'm pursuing his presence, I am looking for his manifested presence. I know I'm not going to see him, you know, like I see you or natural. I can't touch him like I touch you. But his presence has an aura about it. I can mm-hmm. feel, feel him. Mm-hmm. Okay. You can feel God. And so sometimes people say, well, how do you know you're in the presence of God? How do you know that God is real? Oh, my God. Because he makes himself present. Uh, it's almost like if you walk in the room, you just made yourself present. Mm-hmm. Where people can see you. Now, yes, you can go behind a couch, a chair, and hide. But once you stand up, you've made yourself present. So it's like that. God is is there. You don't feel. You may not feel him. You may not see him. But when you're asking for his manifested presence, you begin to feel him. So when I said to you, uh, "This is what we're talking about." What did you think? What was the first thing you thought about? Well, I didn't. I wasn't sure what to think about it first until you start saying, "Are we seeking after things? Mm-hmm. Are we in pursuit of things? Or are we in pursuit of Him?" Yes. And um, something else that you, as you began to talk, I started thinking about. You said you're at an age mm-hmm. where you're now mm-hmm. um, after Him. Um, in the early stages, like you said, we're we're looking for the blessings mm-hmm. and. Um, I think about like when let's just say you go to a church Mm -hmm. and somebody prophesied and they always got good things to say. They're, oh, you know, you're such a beautiful person Mm -hmm. and, you know, they want to speak wealth and they want to speak things. And, you know, so now you're seeking God for these things. It's like this this woman, this man of God said Mm -hmm. it. Um. You know, that I'm I'm going to go to college and get a scholarship and Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a new car and I'm going to get a promotion and I'm going to get, you know, all these lovely things. Mm -hmm. And so now it's like you're not seeking God because you want a relationship with him. You're seeking him for what he can get, you know, what you can get out of him. Mm -hmm. And these are things that we oftentimes forget where, yes, he's a spirit, but it's Mm -hmm. like... Mm -hmm. How do you, how would you feel if only time you got yes. a call yes. is when somebody need money, need, they uh-huh. need a place to stay, they need yep. you to cook something. Or just, if you would just only call, no one, and then you sitting there going like, dang, they ain't even say hi. Right. <laughs> they didn't say, ask me how I was doing or nothing. Mm-hmm. They just went straight to the point. Hey, I had, I had someone call me before and say, what's your credit score? What? Wow. There's just certain things you just don't just, yeah. just don't ask people. I don't care how close they is, you know. Um, mm-hmm. you know, so being in pursuit of him, the the things that I was thinking about when you were talking, when you talked about age, mm-hmm. is once you get to a point where you're done with the things, because mm-hmm. I think that's where I'm at now, after you've had the cars and yeah. you had the house, then you've had the things, the purses, the shoes. You you know what it's like to be homeless. You know what it's like to have money. You know what it's like to be yeah. with a car. You know what it's like to be without the car. And then you get to a place where you just, God, I just want peace. Yes. Yes. That that's it was like, you know, I, I want I want to be happy. I want I want peace, mm-hmm. you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and you find peace and quiet. So it was come just on, like, you know, you used to get in your yes. car once upon a time and cut the radio on. Mm-hmm. Now you just get in the car and you don't want to get nothing. <laughs> yeah, I do that do all nothing. the time, all the time. Because you like if you're at work, or if you're in the store, you, you're around people. And so when you get in that quiet place, nobody's around. You just like you said peace just quiet and where does peace come from god god comes from being in his presence um so as a as a human being as a person a lot of times we're seeking after things or even even if it is peace even if it's love 
But what we're trying to say today on this program is that we need to pursue God because in his presence is all of that, the love, love the peace. peace. You know, if you're saying today, I'm lonely, been there, done that, mm -hmm. you know, and learning, even at my age, learning to be okay with being by myself. Well, I've, you know, when you were talking also about, um, because it's always funny when when it's new to people, mm -hmm. as far as like the presence of God, it's always different. And if you ask him, mm -hmm. you know, he will show up in a way that, you know, will not be scary to you or right. whatever, because mm -hmm. he knows you. Yes. So he's, yes. you know, he ain't going to have no... No mm -hmm. moving picture, you no, know. Just that's the, not him. You know. Now, I'm not happy. It may happen, but it ain't him. Okay. You know, so, I mean, yeah. I've just thought about the different things. You know, you can be anxious. You can be mm -hmm. nervous and you can pray and you ask God to show up. And, I mean, I've had it where I, I almost thought I was literally was going to die. I was mm -hmm. having a fever. Mm -hmm. I was hot. Um and it was because my my husband was 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 cheating on me, and mm -hmm. I was I just was my my um my stomach was burning, my chest yeah, was hurting, nerves, you know, true. and then yeah. you know these visions of him being with the other woman, and I mean just all things. I was like, that's it, I'm, I'm about to check out. I feel it, mm -hmm. you know, and I just laid across my bed and I said, God, I don't want this anymore take it away yes and it was almost like he said i was waiting on you now that that's the instant <laughs> popcorn yeah he, he can do that he can do it yes. he can do that You're right and it was like oh daughter i was waiting on you mm -hmm. and it was just like an instant calm and peace that peace, came over yes. me and mm -hmm. i got and i got things done so it can be peace and calm in the midst of of turmoil and mm -hmm. and disarray you know, I've even, you know, you can, you know, feel like a tingly on the inside. Mm -hmm. I've been very hot. You will hear people say they get very hot. They think it's the temperature, but it's, it's, the, it's the Holy Spirit. It's, yeah. it's his presence. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's just different ways. There's laughter. Mm -hmm. You be laughing and don't even know why. Right. <laughs> you know, um, you'll be smiling, don't know why. You'll cry. Mm -hmm. And don't know why. There's different ways that he'll show up as far as a presence, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, I, I've even had the presence where you could just feel like, you know, like if you're outside and it's nice out and you feel like this breeze mm -hmm. go by. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, it feels so good. It's right. relaxing. That's, you know, that can be his presence mm -hmm. also. It'll be what's familiar to you, but not. Yeah, in a way, he doesn't want to scare you. Right, mm -hmm. it's not something that you know you would experience, not necessarily in the natural. Mm -hmm. It's just like you know something in the inside. Sometimes it'll be just the sense in your in your stomach, in mm -hmm. your what they call your spiritual belly. But mm -hmm. um, and being in pursuit of him, you you you'll eventually get to this place because I think mm -hmm. at this age, me and you, we've talked about this. That once you've had all of those tangible things, yes. you start looking for the things that's not tangible because mm -hmm. it's like, look, I can give up if I'll give up my car, my house, right, and right. everything just for my peace. I will stop surrounding mm -hmm. myself around people. And once you realize that God is that source, yes, you know, you you know, you you be willing to get rid of things. You'd be really willing to get rid of people, and it's not always comfortable but once you get to that place of tired mm -hmm. you'll be willing to let I'm tired of looking All at right. these clothes I'm tired of this car yes. I can walk I, I you know what I'm just gonna take a walk and me and God going we gonna so I'm a I'm gonna have a little conversation with God mm -hmm. and you know so I just think about that pursuit it's just like even you know I think about being in a hospital mm -hmm. those things that where you really feel like you need people and they're yeah. not always there right their support, you know, just being in the hospital. Yes. You know, it's like, God, I need your presence. We oftentimes will, when somebody's about to have surgery or we find out someone is yes. in the hospital, we pray for them. We, we right. pray for the angels. We ask for the Holy Spirit to show up and be there with the doctors, yes. with the nurses, with the person and cover them so they don't feel alone. That's the right. things that we're praying for yes. when we're in pursuit of him. If nobody is physically there, the presence of God, God is what is you there. need. Yes. And you really 
realize that stuff that's at home, it don't matter. You don't care nothing about that Michael Kors purse, the right. red bottom shoes. You just want the presence. Mm hmm. You want the presence of God, you know, in actuality. Sometimes, you know, we want the tangible. You want a support system. And it's okay to have that. Right. Yeah. It's okay. And maybe God will send. He knows what you need. Mm -hmm. So if I was in the hospital and I might feel like I need somebody tangible, although I know that God is there, mm -hmm. he may send Mary and to be by my side. Mm -hmm. But again, when you're done, when you get to a place of maturity and those things don't matter anymore, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people don't even matter. You're like, uh, my circle is small. Matter of fact, I got a short line. I, mm -hmm. I got a line. I ain't even got a full circle. Because God will put people in your life for a season and a reason, and he will remove them, and it's on to the next. Mm -hmm. So being Amen. in pursuit is very is, is very crucial to, to the time that we have, the borrowed time we have here on earth. Mm-hmm. Let's go into the word because we need to back up everything that we say on this program. Um, if you have your Bibles, if not, just write it down. Matthew 7 and 7. This is one of my favorite scriptures um, because it talks about three different types of things that God has given unto us as a people that we can do. It says, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. So God is saying three different things. Mm -hmm. You can ask, and then it'll be given to you. If you seek, you will find. If you knock, then it will be opened unto you. So we're going to focus, of course, on the seeking because that's the pursuit. And the reason I use this scripture, and you know, first of all, so that you know it is in the word, mm -hmm. but secondly, because Pursuit means to go after something. So I'm seeking, meaning I have to do something. Ooh. So God, yes, he will, he will come after us, which is our next scripture is going to talk about. But know that you can seek after him. You can pursue him. You can go after him. Um, wherever you are, how, whatever age you are, you don't have to be a certain age. You don't have to be a certain color. Because when he created us, he created us all the same. It doesn't matter what our color is. God doesn't look at color. Again, he's looking at our hearts, our motives for why we do what we do. And he tells us what we need to do. He's telling us right here, ask so I can give it to you. But you got to remember, you're asking for something has to be aligned to what I want to give you. God's not going to give you something that he does not want you to have. So keep that in mind. If something you receive something and it blows up in your face, meaning it doesn't come out right or whatever, that was not God. God just stepped back and he, he allowed you to have what you wanted to have because Satan is, is right there mm -hmm. to give you what you're asking for because he knows it's going to destroy you or hurt you or whatever the case may be negatively. God is saying, because you keep asking for this thing that does not line up to my will for you, it's not in my word, I can't give that to you. But since you're so stuck on it, I'm going to step back and I'm allow you to have what you want so that you can see it's really not what you want. Hmm. So again, seek after God, pursue his presence because everything you need or you think you need, desire it is really in God and God has already a purpose. He already has a plan for us. And so my seeking him is not really seeking him for what I want. Because remember, you're seeking him. So as I'm seeking him, I'm seeking what he wants for me. What he desires for me to have, what he desires for me to go through whatever, you know, experiences. See, we think when we get saved, everything is going to be hunky-dory. Everything is going to be good. Nothing bad is going to happen to us. And it's quite the difference because what God wants to do is to see himself in us. And so he will allow us to go through some experiences in our pursuit, in our seeking after him so that we can know him. If you were never hungry, how would you know God would feed you? If you've never gone through a trial, 
how would you know God can get you out or take you through the trial? Because we always say, God doesn't take us out of it. He takes us through it. Why? Because he needs us to see himself. He needs us to see even what's on the inside of us because we're made in his image. And so God is God, all powerful, all knowing. He's everywhere. And so he wants us to know no matter where you are, I'm there. No matter what you're going through, I'm there. I can get you through it. But you got to seek after me. Seek my way of doing it. Seek my thoughts. Because the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. And we have to always remember when we're going through and we say, because God got on me about this. And he said, Marion, stop saying you don't know what to do. Why did he tell me that? He said, because in my word, I told you, you have the mind of Christ. With the mind of Christ, you always know what to do. You have the Holy Spirit. Counselor. He counsels me. He will show me what I need to do. So stop confessing. I don't know what to do. Why? Because I do. I, but I have to switch out of myself and pursue after him, his way of doing things. Now, you're over here crying. I'm, I'm holding it back. I know. I need you to share what you're experiencing right now. Because someone out there might be experiencing the same thing. Um, I'm feeling with the pursuit. And... It's, 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 um, excuse me. It's almost like if you're in a relationship, if it's something that you want, if there's someone that you want bad enough, mm -hmm. you're going to, you're going to pursue them. Mm -hmm. You're going to go after them. You're going to do the things. You're going to get to know that person. Yes. You're going to want that person to get to know you, but he already knows you. Mm -hmm. He already knows you. So that part is easy. But the pursuit part, if you take the time to pursue him, and I think that's what I'm here. If you take that same time and energy to pursue him the way that you pursue that man, yes. or you pursue that woman, yes. Um, when it comes down to the things that you want, you might see the thing, something in them that you think that may be beneficial and God can definitely add to your life. It's like, I want you to have That's the right. things that, that, you know, the desires of your heart. And there's things that I have for you that are bigger than the things that you're asking for. That's right. Mm -hmm. So that it's just right. like, it's, it's a heaven. It's like a conviction. It's like, I want them to pursue me. Mm -hmm. There's something that I have for you there's things that I want you to have so if you say I don't know how to pursue God mm -hmm. I don't know how to pray I don't know you know what you do like you said you do know think about how you pursue that man or that woman mm -hmm. you're going you're going to take the time to date them you're going to take the time to get to know them mm -hmm. and once you get to know them you'll do more things that you know that they're like sometimes you're willing to compromise there are some things that may God may want you to do that you may not be comfortable with, but you're willing to do it for that relationship it. that on. you're in. Come on. The truth. You're willing to change everything from, oh, my, my, my man don't like me to wear makeup. Oh, well, well, she don't like where I wear um, gray sweatpants because that was that was a thing for a minute. But you're willing to compromise with these humans. Mm -hmm. But God say, seek mm -hmm. me. He's greater. Seek me. Make the same compromises for me. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and although I'm sure, you know, it's like only time Asia praises when something is wrong, when she needs some money or when she needs or when she needs that. And then those are the things you need to take in consideration. It's like, I want you to have these things, mm -hmm. but, you yes. know, not just seek me just when you need those, those things. things. And then when you get it, you fall back, you stop talking to me. Mm -hmm. You know, we think we we forget about this stuff. Like when you're married and you're in a relationship, we say, do the same things. Continue to date right. your wife. Continue yes. to wine and dine. Don't wait till don't you stop. say I do and then I don't. Right. He wants the same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. And it's just so heavy. That's why I'm like, I'm holding back tears. It's like, pursue me. 
-hmm. Have a relationship with me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be in the midst of the relationship, whether it's marriage or if this is the person that he has for you to marry. I want this person to give mm -hmm. you those things you know, that you desire. I want to be in the midst of your marriage. I want to be in the midst of your relationship with your children. I want to be in the midst of, of, you know, of your ministry or whatever, your business or whatever. He wants to be there. It's almost like having a silent partner. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, he's providing the, the, the majority of the things because he put it in you for you to have this business, for you to be in that person's life. It's just like, seek me. You know, um, when you're married, you know, it's it's no longer I, it's us. When you go and you spend money and, and, and you don't know what, I don't know if me and Mary had a joint bank account and I just go spend money not knowing that she had money for a bill, it don't work. We, we'll, we'll be bumping heads. And that happens a lot. So the thing is, if you go ahead and do something, think, even thinking it's the right thing without seeking God first, you can make a mistake that will set you back. Yes, he could put you back on the path that, that, that he has for you, but it's a minor setback mm -hmm. if, you does not, if you do not seek him first. And I like how you put that together as for his marriage, because even when God is in it, God still needs to be priority. He still right. needs to be the center. Don't get so engulfed in these things, people, places. God, God has to always be the pursuit. He has to always be what we desire the most. I'm going to give this last scripture, Philippians 3 and 12. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Know this, God has pursued us. And in his pursuit of us, we became saved. We accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We're now in the beloved, in the kingdom of God. And God is saying, now I need you to come after me. Come and apprehend me. Seek after me. As she was expressing the pursuit, God, God is so in love with us. He wants us to pursue him. Pursue that love. Pursue his goodness, his greatness, because it's right there for us. We love you. Have a wonderful day.